Hello class and welcome to section 2.5 which is solving absolute value equations. By the end of today's lesson you will be able to evaluate absolute value expressions and solve equations involving absolute values. An absolute value tells you the distance a number is away from zero. So when you're looking at a number line we are looking at the distance between zero and that particular point that you are given. One thing to remember is that absolute values are always positive. So always positive because we're talking about just how far away they are, not which direction. Positive would tell us to the right and negative would tell us to the left if we were talking directionally, but we're just talking distance, so we're always going to write it as a positive value. So for example, 2 and negative 2 both have an absolute value of 2. So the question for you now is what two integers have an absolute value of 34? The answer to that would be 34 and negative 34. When we are evaluating expressions with absolute values, we treat absolute values like parentheses. So following PEMDAS, absolute value would be done first. When we see absolute value in an expression, we're going to see these two vertical bars. That tells us that we are solving an absolute value and that should be done first. When we are given information, we're going to want to go ahead and plug it in. So first it says negative a. So I've got negative and then we're going to plug in our a value, which is negative 3, plus b, which is 2, plus the absolute value of negative 3 plus c, which is 7. So all I did in this step was plug my information into the expression. Now, as I said before, absolute values get treated like parentheses, so we're going to solve this part first. So we've got negative 3 plus 7. So we've got negative negative 3 plus 2 plus negative 3 plus 7, which gives us 4. Now I need to find the absolute value of 4. 4 is 4 spaces away from 0 on the number line. So I have negative negative 3 plus 2 plus 4. Now I'm looking out front here. I've got a double negative. If you recall, two negatives make a positive. So I now have positive 3 plus 2 plus 4. Following PEMDAS, we're going to do addition of the first two numbers next. So 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 4, giving us a final answer of 9. So again, we plugged in our values into our equation, solved the absolute value first, and then continued to follow PEMDAS. Go ahead and try this problem on your own. Plugging in the values, you see that you plug in, again, negative 3 for A, 2 for B, and 7 for C. Solving inside the absolute value first, 2 minus 7 is negative 5. Then we solve the absolute value of that, which is 5, because negative 5 is 5 spaces away from 0. Then you're going to do 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12. Subtracting 5 gives us negative 17. When we are talking about equations that have absolute values, so again, these vertical bars mean absolute value. We have two potential cases here, because remember from that first slide that there are two numbers that equal every absolute value. So for that first slide example, the absolute value of 34 was both 34 and negative 34. So looking at this example, we have an answer of 15, which means we can either have positive 15 or negative 15 inside this absolute value. That is why we have case 1 and case 2. Case 1 is always going to be positive. So you're going to say m minus 9 is equal to positive 15. Just copying down the equation that they give you because positive 15 could be inside the absolute value bars. For case 2, we're going to deal with the negative option. So it could be the absolute value of negative 15 on the inside of these bars. After that, we're going to go ahead and solve these just like a regular equation. So to get rid of minusing 9 in the first case, I add 9 and I get m is equal to 24. In this second case, I also need to get rid of minusing 9, 
So I'm going to add 9 to both sides, giving me m is equal to negative 6. So when you have an absolute value equation, you are always going to get two answers. The first answer is going to be if it equals the positive number. The second answer is going to come from if it equals the negative number. Go ahead and try this one on your own. In this case, we set it equal to 37 and negative 37. Both times, our first step is to subtract 7 to get rid of the positive 7. In the positive case, that gives us 30. Then we divide by 2, which gives us 15. In the negative case, that gives us negative 44, dividing by 2, giving us negative 22. Couple other special cases to note about absolute value equations. If you look at this equation, we've got absolute value of 7x plus 19 is equal to negative 52. On that first slide, I warned you that absolute values can only be positive numbers. If you see this case where we have just an absolute value equal to a negative, that's going to indicate to you that this is a no solutions problem. So again, if that absolute value is equal to a negative, it is a no solutions problem. However, on IXL, if you choose to do that, you will see some problems like this, where I've got negative 7, absolute value of x plus 9 is equal to negative 49. What you need to do first here is get rid of anything outside the absolute value. So the first thing we would actually have to do here is divide by a negative 7. When I do that, the negative 7s on the left side cancel out. And I'm left with the absolute value of x plus 9 is equal to negative 49 divided by negative 7 which is positive 7. So we actually have a positive case that we can solve because I got rid of that negative by dividing by the negative on the outside. So then you would go ahead and split that into case 1 and case 2. Case 1 is x plus 9 is equal to 7. And case 2 is x plus 9 is equal to negative 7. On the positive case, we start by subtracting 9. And we get an answer of x is equal to negative 2. With our second case, we're going to again subtract 9. And we get an answer of x is equal to negative 16. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please let me know when you get to class.